today we are not going to talk about G-Shocks. We're not going to talk about Tough Cassie watches. No. I mean, how can you not be fascinated by such a thing? This watch, and you're seeing its guts right now, it's more than 60 years old and it's still shiny and perfectly working. Look at the beauty just off the movement, which right now is not running because I haven't wound it yet. I am absolutely not an expert as far as watches are concerned. I just like them and I like mechanical watches a lot. But if you have any knowledge of Omega watches and let me get this close to the camera, maybe you can tell me a bit more than I know about this watch. What I know is what is connected to its history and I will tell you in just a second. But now let me close the watch for fear of ruining its insides. And this is the back of the watch. Okay, it did click. Hello, my dear watch-loving friends, and welcome to Wooden Watch You Don't Need. Today, we are not going to talk about G-Shocks with Bluetooth, Tough Solar, and Atomic Time. We're not going to talk about Tough Cassius with oddly beautiful shapes that look like a spaceship married a submarine. This is their baby child. We're not even going to talk about old stainless steel digital watches. We are going to talk about this beautiful watch here. This is an Omega, or Omega as some say, from the late 50s or early 60s. And this watch is not waterproof, this is not shockproof, this does not synchronize with an atomic tower, this does not have a stopwatch, it does not have a light, it does not have loom, it does not have the date or the day of the week. This one tells the time. And in order for it to tell the time, you have to wind it every day. So it takes patience. But look at its beauty. It is so simple. This is so beautifully simple. Look at the dial. No numbers. Just lines. A double line for the 12 position. Single lines for all the other hours and very small lines for the passing of every minute or every second. The hour hand, the minute hand and the second hand, nothing more. Of course we have a crown and the crown has the Omega logo on it. I hope this is visible. And I also happen to have the original buckle with the Omega logo as well and, and this allows for a very elegant way of fastening the watch to your wrist. You've already had a look at the inside of the watch. The back of the watch is extremely simple. There's nothing written on it. You just have the signed crown, the signed dial, and that's it. So this watch belonged to my father. My father is still alive but when he was 18 or 19, he told me, a relative of his, maybe an old aunt, gave this watch to him as a gift. And I asked him, oh, so she was very rich. Well, he told me this was like the simplest model that Omega made at the time. And can you see that the dial is kind of ruined in this area? And that's because this watch was bought not at a watchmaker's shop, but believe it or not, it was bought at an optician's shop. My father used to live, and he still does, as I do, in a small village, so the closest city at the time, we're talking late 50s or early 60s, was at 8 kilometers, roughly 5 miles. And so if you wanted to go to a real watch shop, you had to travel those 5 miles. And, and I'm guessing that my father's aunt did not have a driving license, let alone a car. So she went to the closest village, which stood at just half a mile instead of 5 miles. And at the optician's shop, there were watches on sale. 
and she bought this watch she gave it to my father as a present but then the watch had some problems well of course when your mechanical watch has problems you take it to the watchmaker to be fixed but there was no watchmaker there was an optician and when the optician opened the watch in order to try to fix it he also quite clumsily if i may say did something wrong maybe he used some kind of heat to fix something i mean he left these marks on the dial making the dial uh, yeah quite ruined as you can see there's a kind of a bump here and next to it there's a an orange dot of some kind the color is that of rust and here also in the upper portion of the dial there's this shadow of a kind my father had this watch in a drawer he told me well if you manage to have it fixed you can keep the watch which i did the watch originally in the late 50s slash early 60s came with a strap just like this this strap i had to commit a crime in order to make it fit because i bought this strap when i was visiting a city which is i don't know 200 miles from where i live the watchmaker who had repaired this watch told me the measurements for a replacement i bought it following the measurement that he had given to me and then when i came home because i did not have the watch with me at the time i found that it was too wide so i kept it but i had to i, I think you can see i had to cut the extremities here and here uh, if you look closely you will notice it i know that i have done something criminal but i wanted to wear this watch as it was meant to be worn um, because when my father gave it to me this watch had a, a steel bracelet of a kind uh, which was all rusty and was not working properly so let me put the watch on so you will see how beautifully the the buckle fastens i have a very thin wrist 16.5 centimeters or 6.5 inch wrist and you can see if i put it in the last hole still the watch is a bit loose on my wrist i should get a new strap and this is the system for the watch to be fastened so the first keeper is actually useless because you can slide the second keeper here and now the end of the strap will go under this part of the strap and so you can put it inside the keeper inside the loop this is how it looks so just pretend this keeper was not there uh, this is how this beautiful omega buckle closes and this is how the watch looks on my 16.5 centimeter wrist i think this is a very elegant very uh, smart looking and i like the idea of a timepiece uh, an instrument telling you the time without depending on anything but the strength of your fingers and of course the mechanical movement that it has inside i did a video on a tough solar g-shock and one of my viewers commented in case of a nuclear winter the tough solar function would be useless well in case of a nuclear winter this watch would still continue to tell the time provided you wind it every day this has been wooden watch you don't need of course you don't need a watch like this but this is so beautiful to look at and the history behind watches like this is so fascinating that to a certain extent they can be considered as recent archaeology items and I like them so much and I'm so amazed at the fact that this is still running. I've always liked Omega watches. I don't know why, maybe because they're not Rolexes. Oh, and by the way, between you and I, I also like Rolexes. But I found that Omega was a bit less hyped, so I like them more, and I probably still do. And I'll, my love for Omega watches was rekindled by a YouTube channel called The Omega Enthusiast, run by a guy, I think he's Canadian, who knows a lot about Omega watches, and he makes beautiful and very informative videos about them. So, once again, this has been Wooden, what you don't need, and I'll see you on the next. Will it be a digital or a mechanical watch? I don't know. But I'll see you on the next anyway. Ciao!